It's like a, an older dude, a younger guy, and I don't know. And then there's like one brunette girl. And that girl is credited on IMDb as suicidal lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing about that is we know nothing about her. We never hear any backstory. It's just a woman in a counseling. And they're like, she's a suicidal lesbian. That's important for her character for you to know. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the 81st episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad. Show we watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. I am your host, Mr. Brian Chilgo. Joined by the other host, Mr. Kyle Hinton. First things first, let's go blues. Now let's moving on. <laughs> moving on. Getting a little bit of Gloria. <laughs> a little bit of Gloria. Uh, moving on. Uh, we got so last week we had a weird one. It was a fan sent in, and it, you know it had it. It had its uh, laughs. It had its its let's high face moments. Facts. Brian was basically just blown away by it. I, I thought was, it was fantastic. I was. I'm not. A lot of people disagreed with me. In, in the comments, uh, a handful of people agreed with me. So it's, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Um, that being said, we're back to our, our normal. Yes, this uh, one was kind of everything we liked about, yes. you know, bad independent yes. films. This movie uh, is called Angry Kelly. And it's about a woman who is very angry. And we'll, we'll just start, we'll start off here. Um, here's where the director wanted to go. He took a left somewhere. It's a he, she. He, uh, she. She. Sim, Simuel something. It, well, it is. It's she. Yes. The director for this yeah. fine piece, uh, she took a left somewhere yeah. along the line, and we ended up into some weird territory. This movie is one of those movies that we get every now and then that has, at its heart, a, a good message that they're trying to get across. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. They're trying to get across. Literally, the move, message of this movie, which it makes very clear at the end, and we'll what? talk about. What, 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 what message? <laughs> the message of this movie is... Be nice to people, Kyle. <laughs> That's the message of this movie. Be nice to people. You never know what they're going through. So just like smile. Also, Be nice. suicide's bad. Also, if you're contemplating suicide, get help. Yeah, Great ahead. messages. Great messages. But the, the 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 delivery of those messages in this film, the way we get there, is a little off. Nutty. I told you to play nice. Oh. <laughs> it's nutty. I love it. I've been swimming in raw sewage. I love it. So uh, we get the opening credit, and this is a Maverick film. You can watch this on YouTube if you want in its oh, entirety legally. I love Maverick films. They gave us a lot of crappy things. Yes. Uh, a good example of a of a Maverick film that we did previously, Treasure Raiders. Mm. Really? That's yes, Maverick that film? was a Maverick film. Because the opening credit, the graphic that plays at the beginning of this movie from Maverick Entertainment looks like the production company logo was like... It looked like it was going to be at the front of like a PC game from 1992. That horse running, yes. and I was, like, I felt like I was about to play Doom or something. Like it's, it's weird. <laughs> this movie is listed on IMDb as a drama mystery thriller. That's how it's categorized. I just want to. There is no mystery element. Zero mystery. I will say. That I just want to put that out there because where we get in, uh, so like last week's movie, comedy was like its second genre. Mm -hmm. It's definitely trying to be funny at times. This movie, I do not believe, other than once or twice, is trying to be funny. So all of the humor that comes from it is pure and uh, pure and fresh as the driven snow. <laughs> this is this is pure, unadulterated, unintentional uh, humor. The best kind. <laughs> yes. So uh, the opening credits roll in, and it, and we get uh, it's 2014 was the year on this, by the way. So it's pretty. Rel I don't know when they were filming it, but it, it's IMDb release date was 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, opening credits. Nothing more exciting and interesting to start your movie off than white aerial font over family photos <laughs> with with uh with a uh, airport airport lounge jazz music lightly playing in the background oh God. okay the music throughout this movie oh it's so bad there's so okay there's some there's some moments we'll get to it it's later. a mixture of uh like terrible mediocre um like free music that you know like like no uh 
royalty free music mm -hmm. and a mixture of like the director's friends like playing acoustic guitar and wailing yes. <laughs> it's del it's delightful there's, there's a particular one that is used um i don't know later. what you're talking about so we'll have you'll have to yeah, remind we'll, me when we'll, we get, get there okay so we start with a literally after this opening credits we start with a close-up of powdered sugar donuts sitting on a plate yes. <laughs> And this lady is eating them. Uh, and the guy, I love the guy says she's eating them and she stops. And the guy, there's a, it's a man and a woman. And the man turns to her and goes, go finish those donuts. And she goes, no. And by the way, this guy has been in things. Has he? Yes. Yes. He's been in, he's been in a, uh, Got a couple things. He has a he has a list from all the way back really? in the 70s. He's pretty good. I mean, he's okay. Yeah. Relative to the other people in this film, he's yeah. all-star caliber. Um, but he's just in the frame story. So this movie has a frame story mm -hmm. of this these two co-workers talking about something that happened previously at their company. Uh, and that thing is wild. <laughs> Which, by the way, by the way, is completely accessible through an online blog. Yes. Yes, the, the history of which is a, written in an online blog. Um, so, But he goes, you got to finish those donuts? And she goes, no. The way that man just talked to me got me heated. I may never eat another donut again. What, <laughs> what, does, that, what does that mean? So did, she, he like, did he like say like, hey, lose a few pounds? Yeah, right? Like, what does that have to, like, that's the thing that makes no sense about that line. It's like, if he was mean to her, you would think she'd be like, you know, like like if I'm having a bad day, I want to eat a couple donuts. I don't know. Like if I have a rough day at work, I want a few donuts. I don't I don't lose my appetite because somebody was mean to Do me. Do I at look work. like I need an excuse? <laughs> yeah, but um, no, you look great, Kyle. You look very dapper. Thanks. <laughs> what uh, are you looking? Sorry, to see yeah, I, look, I looked it up. The guy's name is uh, L. Warren Young, and he's been an actor in that name sounds familiar films. What's like a most known for or whatever? God, True Detective, he was a, a little bit part in. Oh, shit. Uh, Wonder what season. Stuff. Oh, God, there was one that was a big one that he... Uh... Wait, does he play... Oh, no, I don't know. I didn't watch season two or three of True Detective. I only watched the first season. I don't remember him from the first season, but he been, could, he been could been be in it. in numerous things like Nashville and stuff like that. Holy cow. But probably because he's from the Atlanta area. <laughs> yeah. Footloose. He was in the uh, remake of Footloose. Oh, Mm -hmm. Well, there you so, go. Like he's like this guy's been in. Well, stuff. like you, like I said, he's definitely the best actor in this movie. As, as Brian would say, he's an actual person. He's an actual person. <laughs> this is all you got. Why does it say big and tall on the sign? Big and tall. You need bigger and taller. She says she's really <laughs> upset, and so she won't eat her powdered donuts anymore. And she says, "I swear, if I had the chance, I would murder somebody." She literally says that to her coworker, which. Hint. Given the history at this place, right. call the cops. That is a big red flag <laughs> to that guy. Also, pro-life tip. Don't say to one of your other coworkers, man, I really wish I could murder people. Don't do that. I wasn't supposed to say that? No, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, so the old man starts saying, he's explaining to her, he's like, well, you know, we all go through things. Uh, and some lady used to work here. Yeah, yeah. And her life was pretty rough, so she started a blog, Kyle. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So go to this blog; it's available on this. Well, you know, she doesn't website. read it. She doesn't read it. He just tells her about it. But, no, she goes on at one point. No, no she, that's the doing? police officer. Detect. Oh. So that that woman who's reading it is a police officer who's a part of the flashback. Gotcha. It's like three. It's like three frame story. It's like two frame stories. It's these two coworkers talking about this woman who had all this thing and wrote a blog. And at the same time, we're learning about these police officers who were reading her blog after the fact. And now, so it goes, the the original story with Kelly happened, then the police officers read her thing, and then our people are talking about both of those things in the present time. Pepe Sylvia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no Pepe Sylvia, you gotta be kidding me! I got boxes full of Pepe! Um, also, at this moment, uh... This movie, one of the things you have to talk about is the cinematography. And Kyle, yes, yes. the close-up. There's also some like quote-unquote special effects choices that got Are there? jacked up at one point. Oh, I have to, I have to, we'll have to, you have to explain or remind me what that is when we get to it. But the 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 framing of shots in this movie is this: it's chin 
to eyebrows. And the sometimes not film. even the eyes are in there and yeah. it's just nose and mouth yeah. the whole time. Yeah, well, because they do a lot of stuff where they zoom in all the way and then like the person moves and they're like trying to follow them with the camera. Oh my God, there's a part where they're doing a, some sort of jib or dolly track through a house and it's shaky as shit. Yeah. Oh, it is. The, the cinematography work in this movie is fantastic. It's so good. Um, also, the sound design truly fantastic we get yes. sound dropouts we get music in one channel only so much music only comes through the right channel it happens all the time um and i love so that he's like let me tell you this story and he goes i need some coffee do you want some coffee and she goes no i'm good and he goes you know i quit drinking it for a while hadn't touched it in years he's like straight up talking about coffee like it's like, hard liquor yes, exactly <laughs> He's like, he's like, he literally says, I haven't, I, I hadn't touched it in years. And then I got back on the coffee and I'm like, it's coffee, man. Unless you're drinking like a shit ton, it's okay. Yeah, generally speaking, it's kind of acceptable. Coffee is one of those drinks that you need to put enough crap into to ignore the fact that you're drinking bean water. Uh, some people like it. I do put crap in mine because I don't like it. That much, I don't drink it at all. Yeah. So. But uh, it was just so funny because it's like, if you have like a coffee a day, that's not like. Th okay, sure. Um, anyway, so we know her story, Kelly's story, the titular Kelly. We know her mm. story because she wrote all these blogs and left them behind. And they're literally called the suicide blogs. Yes. We see on screen, the, one of the detectives logs in and is re So we cut to the detectives reading and she logs in and sees the suicide blogs. And it's her reading the blog. And she talks about how, like, she wrote this blog originally. And then somebody from TSB contacted her and offered to pay her for her blog and i'm like the thing that's wild to me is that so she was writing this blog on the suicide blog long before she ever planned to kill herself yeah that's that's the thing i was looking at when i was when she when or something said, here's the title the suicide blog and she, she's you know she's at the point where yeah you have to be committed yeah you put it out there yeah <laughs> it's like you can't title it that and then, all right, sure, fair Not enough. that I'm advocating suicide. To preface, I'm not advocating suicide. It just is false advertisement. <laughs> the Better Business Bureau would be coming down on her ass. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a very serious topic. <laughs> but this movie cannot be taken seriously no. is the problem. Um... Oh, Jesus. Um, so he starts telling her story. Uh, we find out Kelly was an alcoholic. She's typing, and there's a lot of uh, voiceover and, like, um, inner monologue in this movie from Kelly kind mm -hmm. of explaining her feelings. And when she's introduced as a, a alcoholic, we get the first instance, and I think it only happens twice in the movie, of her introduced as a character. We get a still frame that shudders. Yes. Well, you know, that happens later. That yeah, that's later. what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's the second that, time. What, was that a Teresa. style thing? Was that's that a, style a style thing, thing Kyle. You, that's a style that's thing. A style that thing. blew my fucking mind. I think mind. that's a fucking style thing. I think that's a style thing because it happens with Teresa. Her sister gets introduced and it's like the same thing. She's like, Only more stale than me. Hello? I mean, she has the perfect house. Somebody's going to make hay <laughs> with those fucking, I'm doing this and then I'm doing this. Fucking Christ. <laughs> You're welcome, Internet, I guess. Um, I, I, I put this responsibility solely on Scarface. You know what to do. <laughs> oh, Jesus, don't put it on him. And then it's just constant close-ups throughout this whole movie. We find out uh, she's engaged. Kelly's engaged. Yes. She Which has an ex-husband, but she is engaged. It's, it's in this one scene. Is in it's two, two, two scenes, Kyle. Two, it's in two. Two scenes. Okay. Well, because he comes back for the best scene. <laughs> but yes. in the first scene, he has this great scene in the beginning where she walk, she walks up and like she's like, I'm engaged. And she's like, this is my boyfriend or whatever, or in fiance. And she walks up and he's in a car and she goes, Let's hope you're going to have a good day at work, okay? I, I gotta go. Okay, I'm late. <laughs> He used to try and cheer me up, you know, bring me flowers and stuff. And she goes to kiss him and he's like, bye, and just drives away. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. and I was like, oh, he just bailed on her. He's like, I gotta go, bye. 
Um, so it's very clear to ever the audience that uh, he's not into this relationship no. at all, um, which we'll find out why <laughs> later. What's going on there? Um, and then we cut back to our in the office shot, and I have to talk about the the office of the two people talking. You know, the our fr- uh, frame story, and so the guy is framed up, uh, and he's completely out of focus. The sign on the wall behind him is in focus. He is not. But this is so amazing. So this is the moment, and it it's just so delightful and so weird. It cuts to them, and he's talking to her, and the camera starts doing a slow zoom on him. And then it cuts to her, and it's doing a slow zoom, and she knows she picks up a powdered donut and slowly brings it. And the camera, this whole time, the camera's like, zzzz, and she's like, and I'm like, why are we slow zooming a fucking powdered donut? What are we doing? What is happening? He used to cover his office windows with paper just because he didn't want people to walk by and see what he was up to. Now, one particular day, thanks to Mitch, Kelly was in for a very hard letdown. It's so awkward. It's so fucking awkward. It's so weird. But what does it mean? Yeah, what does that mean, man? Oh, Jesus Christ. It's so fucking weird. Uh, And then we get into the actual story. Day one, uh, Kelly on the job. Her boss has a sweet tiger poster (laughs) on Uh, so we're introduced, she works at this business or this company that she doesn't like, and it took me forever to figure out what they actually sell because for the first like five minutes there, they're just like, your sales are down. You're not moving enough product. Why aren't you yes. better? And I'm like, what? Yes. And then they're like, well, what about attachments? Like, attachments for, for what? what? <laughs> yeah. And then we find out they sell vacuums, Kyle. <laughs> they sell vacuum cleaners. Which is the most door-to-door thing you can sell outside of just cleaning product yeah yeah uh it is absolutely and they so they sell vacuum it is hot in here jesus christ i think our air conditioning is not on it's just me <laughs> hey yo look at you then we get the scene that made me want to watch and talk about this movie as i was scrubbing through it's at about the eight minute mark Kelly is on the phone with a customer, Mr. Kim. And this is our introduction to Kelly as an actor. It's amazing. It is. I, this movie is worth the price of admission alone for watching this woman act. I'm not kidding. She is her. She is face facial expressions and nothing else. Mr. Kim. I'm done with you. I don't want to talk to you. Would it help if I could get them send you some extra attachments? Her face, her eyebrows, her cheeks, her mouth deserve each an individual Oscar, Kyle. <laughs> she, I cannot even begin to try to, to, to do what she does in this movie with her face. And it's so distracting. And I'm not even getting to her voice and the way she speaks lines in this scene yet because that is also yes. completely fucking bonkers uh. but her face is just everywhere everything she says is like like it's all over the place you look like, like you're about ready to have a stroke that's what she looks like this whole movie man it's, it's the wildest thing and then then you get to their fucking dialogue and what she's saying and she's like my supervisor is in a meeting and he can't speak to you right now mr kim if you insist on speaking Wait, to me like that, William I will. No, she, there's periods like halfway through every set. It's <laughs> so bad. It's so fucking weird. I'm going to have to get my supervisor on the line. I can have him call you back. And I'm like, what? Are you a speaking spell? What is happening? Like, what the fuck is going on? It's so weird, <laughs> man. And I was trying to figure out if that was like on purpose to mean something. It's not because this really is the only she kind of talks like that throughout. But this one, it is so over the top. It's so, it's so fucking weird. All right, well, let me speak to my supervisor. I'll get right back to you, okay? Okay, all right. All right, goodbye. Uh, I've never seen a human being speak in, with the speech pattern Ooh, that man. she does. Yeah, I, I, again, this feels a little bit like with Arthur. She, yeah, she's an alien. Yeah, she's an alien trying to pretend to be a human, like speaking through like a, a translator. It's so fucking weird. 
Um, uh, and then she's so she's super upset. She got called out, and they're like, "Go see Mitch, the boss." And she's walking down the hallway, staring right down the barrel of the camera, like inner monologuing about how much she hates her job and wants to choke everybody in the office. And it's like, oh boy, God. And the music is only in the right channel in this moment. With my hands around his throat, choking him. He was one of the. And we find out this is when we find out she works at a vacuum company because she starts talking about. Uh, Oh, and she also says that her boss has an evil paper. He does all hides all his evil behind a paper covered window. <laughs> there was a point where they were like, these were supposed to be the best leads. Yeah. Right? These, the, these leads were supposed to work. And the entire time I was just screaming at the top of my lungs. The, the leads are not weak. You're weak. <laughs> I just went full Glary Glenn Ross. Yeah. You're weak. The leads are weak. The leads are weak. The fucking leads are weak. You're weak. <laughs> yeah. No, it's fantastic. Um, so she goes in and he's like, hey, you're fucking up at your job. She's a salesperson, I guess. It doesn't matter. Um, and she's like, one of the only people here that practices honest sales. I don't try to sell people on useless attachments and things. I it's a vacuum. You yes. need attachments for it, lady. <laughs> Not only that. As a salesperson, your job is to essentially sell people's crap they, they don't need. Well, right. And I get what she's saying. Like, she's trying to say, like, I am an honest salesperson. I don't get, I don't take advantage of people. Get out of the industry. Yeah, <laughs> fair, 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 very fair point. It's, there's no such thing as a fair salesperson if you're doing their job right. But, um, uh, but like, my point is, like, if you don't want to do that, well, okay, if you don't want to do that, do, don't do it. But, like, also, the thing she says that she's doing is like, I don't sell people attachments they don't need. I'm like, what? It's a vacuum cleaner. It's nothing. It's 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 the attach. Like, unless what are, what are they like holding their thing horizontally yeah, on a wall? Like what, what 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 kind of attachments are you are you selling like dildo attachments for it? Like and. Spoilers, you need those attachments. Those are great attachments for a fucking vacuum cleaner. Oh I'm just saying, God. like, what? I don't understand what vacuum cleaner attachments you could possibly be selling that are unnecessary, Kyle. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand it at all. I don't get it. It's so weird. Um, yeah. uh, oh, and then a moment during that, she stands up angrily. She's in focus, and then she stands up angrily and moves <laughs> forward. And I'm like, Paul, focus! Paul! <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and there's so many times. I don't know if this is just the camera struggling uh, the entire time. Because I'm pretty sure they did this on, like, one of those Time 10 Zooms. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, clearly this is, like, a, some shitty early... 2000s JBC yeah mid 2000s like yeah but like there's so many times where the camera is struggling and like going in and out of focus oh yeah and having massive problems oh yeah I, like uh, half of the shots in this movie are like, not like, in where, focus where, where those things are like uh God damn it. shut yes kyle's got one now get him <laughs> Get him! <laughs> where, where it's like <laughs> the stills are shuddering right yeah uh like the entire time i was like why I was half expecting it to be massively interlaced. Yeah. I was expecting the camera just to be really shitty. Yeah. No, it, it's, 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 it's real rough. It's real. Not great. Um, so then he sends her out as a door to door sales, <laughs> door to door salesperson because her, her numbers are struggling or whatever. You can do door to door sales or you can hit the door and find another job. Uh, oh, and she explains to herself, or is talking to herself, she's like, I could have killed that punk. And so we're like, this is when I'm starting to get the idea. Oh, so this is going to be, this is a, this is a going postal movie. That's what the, like, she's going to fucking lose it and just murder everybody. Yes. Spoilers. The answer to that question is yes. Um, also, I want to talk about the cover for this movie, because this is the moment in the movie where I looked up, I was looking at it and I found the cover for this film, like the DVD box or the IMDb yeah. art. It is one of those very classic, uh, this is not remotely in this no, film. No, not at all. It is, it looks like, it. it's it's a shot from behind of a woman in like short shorts and a cut off midriff shirt. That She looks like Laura Croft Tomb Raider from like the 90s or whatever. And uh, behind her is an office full of people running away from her gun, <laughs> which is terrifying. Um, so it's like, the, the, the art is like a uh, Laura Croft office murderer. Yeah. And I'm like, I guarantee you, I will eat my shirt if this woman, if Kelly ends up in that outfit at any point in this fucking movie, I will eat my goddamn shirt. I'm not going to have to eat my shirt because she absolutely doesn't. No, that is no. And it is literally is pretty much titled. Uh, the, the tagline is now would be a good time to run. 
there from this go. film. There you go. Uh, yeah, it's one of those box arts that tried just there to sell you on the movie, which has nothing to do. I mean, it has to do with the movie and the fact that it's somebody killing people in an office, but it's nothing to do with like. Whoa! That. Spoilers, spoilers, Brian. Everybody knows where this is going. <laughs> Uh, so she starts smoking in her car, breaks the cigarette as she's pulling it out. And she pulls up a cigarette that's like dangling in half. <laughs> Just little stupid things like that. And this is where she starts monologuing about her sister that she hates. Her sister, this is the weirdest backstory. Yes, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's weirdest amazing. Backstory. It's amazing. Okay, okay. So how did the parents die again? The mom, mom died, or died. the dad left, dad and then left. the mom, mom died. died. And we All find right. out later how the so, mom died. So when, when they, that... <laughs> now that they are... It's it's sisters, right? Yeah, Teresa and, they and are Kelly. left... Essentially, Parallel. orphans. Yeah, orphans. In a way. So they, they are in foster, foster care. I assume. I don't know if they One say One of them gets adopted and the other <laughs> doesn't. And she, like, the one who's adopted who lives a, a rather nice life. A rich, extravagant lifestyle. Yeah. And the other one's like, fuck you. I hate you. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Yeah, she's living, uh, Teresa is living an extravagant lifestyle and <laughs> Kelly could not be more upset no, about no, it. It's hilarious. It's, it's, it's so contrived. Yeah. It's amazing. And I love in this moment she's monologuing. She's like, If I'd been adopted by a rich family like my sister, maybe I could have went to college like Teresa. If only met the right guy to have my child by. If only I had been adopted like you. And if only I'd met the right guy to have a kid with. And if only I hadn't gotten drunk at work and fired. And if only it's like... <laughs> One of those was your problem. <laughs> One of those is not like the other. Um, uh, she also lost her kid. Well, her, her she wasn't married and had a kid and they're split and the father took the kid. So we find that out about her. So now she's going door to door. And this is when we get her door to door shenanigans. This is when they try to add comedy to it. Comedy. Just... Uh, she runs her first one is a, a mother of like six kids who's just like can't control her kids and the kid throws food on her it's not that funny or interesting mm-hmm. um also she's wearing like a handwritten name yeah, tag. it's amazing dust genie yeah kelly, kelly. It, it, it looks like a like, five-year-old yeah kid. it's like scribbled on in crayon i was like great <laughs> awesome she goes back to work and at this point we're introduced to tracy who's one of her friends her co-worker her one co-worker who isn't a completely terrible person um she's talking to tracy and uh, tracy walks in and goes can i ask you something if it's bar money, Tracy, forget it. And I'm like, how what? common is that? Of you? How common is that? How often does that happen to you at work that a coworker walks in and is like, can I borrow money? Because that's I, literally never happened to me. Can I borrow me. 100 bucks? No. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but Tracy's like, I like you. If you ever want to talk, I'm just a cubicle away. And Kelly explains how she's in a deep, dark hole and feels like she can't get out. And this line is my one of my favorite lines in the it's movie. Amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, is it the rope line? Yes! yes. You know, sometimes I just feel so alone. I feel like I'm in this deep, dark black hole and I just can't pull myself out of it. Well, Kelly. Thank you for calling Dust Jean Vacuum Wards. This is Sam. Here's the rope. Here, here's the rope. And it is. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Wrong thing to say! <laughs> She's like, she, Kelly is like, I'm suicidal. And her friend is like, I got some rope. <laughs> But she goes, here's some rope. Just reach out and take it, and I'll pull you out of that hole is what she's implying? No, 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 no. That's absolutely what she's trying to say. No, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's so it's, hilarious. Because the way it is delivered, she goes, you, literally, she's like, I'm so depressed. I'm, I am I hate my life. And she goes, it's so here, good. here's some rope. Beat. Beat. And I'm like, what? It's amazing. I love it's it. It's probably so the best line of the film. Yeah, it's so good. fucking good. Oh, it's so good. Uh, um, uh, then Kelly has a great one sided phone conversation that deserves every Oscar and Razzie ever. Um, she just, her facial expressions, the range, just everything. She just, she goes from like calm to screaming to like excited to angry to sad all in like 15 seconds. It's, it's just, just everywhere. Oh, it's so good. Uh, we find out she has PTSD and I was like, if only Neil. Yeah, that's, that's the same <laughs> thing I was thinking. If only Neil was there, he would save you. Um, Unfortunately, they're in Atlanta. They're not anywhere near Las Vegas. Yeah, that's true. He would have to make quite the trek. Well, but he's like Space Jesus. Yeah, he could yeah. teleport. Yeah, that one could teleport. He could be there yeah. in no time. Well, in, or no, that's the wrong one. In, that was pass through. Well, he time travels. But yeah. if you time travel the right way, you the, the world the spins. Earth spins. Yeah, exactly. Wait, time it. Nailed Perfect. It. Great. Neil, come on. Go fix her. You are now free of PTSD. 
Thank you for freeing me. Uh, I love the intro to a shot back at work. It's the three like evil coworkers or two, or it's the two evil coworkers and Tracy, uh, Steve and and I can't remember the girl's name. Um, Amanda, I think it was. Yeah. yeah, they're standing there. It's the three of them standing there, and the shot it comes in, and it was the the screen direction in that moment entering the shot was very clearly laugh like human beings because they're like ha 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 ha. Now we're talking. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> so I heard Mitch was just being mean and sent her out in the field by herself. So look at us. We are humans in conversation. Yeah, yeah, it literally so many conversations like that in this movie. It's amazing. Um, and they're scheming the fuck over Kelly. They're like, basically, everybody is out to get her other than Tracy. At because this she's so damn good. She's so damn talented. <laughs> She she threatens Mitch, the yeah. supervisor. Yeah. And now they gotta find out a way to, to take away her, her leads. Her leads. And give them, give to, them Steve? to Amanda or Steve. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah, it doesn't matter. Hell, Mitch gave those accounts to me. He felt that she was jeopardizing his job, so he sent her out with the worst leads that you can possibly get. And I love too, uh Kelly walks up at one point, or, Tra or Tracy, somebody's talking and says, look, I don't like the way you guys are doing this, or this is mean, or something. And one of them goes, look, you can't have a soft heart in this business, sweetie. And I'm like, oh yeah, the cutthroat, high stakes business world of vacuum sales. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but cookers, or cookers, hookers and blow over here, man. Oh, yeah. This is high stakes. Look, all right, we can't compete with that Dyson shit, but it's so expensive. That's why people want a Kirby. Yeah. All right? That's why they, they still come make to Kirby's. Us. What? They still make Kirby's? I have no idea. Maybe. That was like, that was like the 80s vacuum cleaner your mom always oh, had in the yeah, back yeah, closet. Yeah. yeah, probably. They yeah, always scared the shit out of the dog. Yeah. <laughs> Most vacuums scare the shit out of a dog. But yeah, I just love that. It's too hard. You're too soft for the high stakes vacuum selling world. Okay. You can't close the leads you're given. You can't close shit. You are shit. Hit the bricks, pal, and beat it, because you are going out. Oh, so then she gets, we get some more door-to-door -door stuff, and I love this. This 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 uh this portrayal of lesbians is on par with uh the Incubus or whatever yes. portrayal, where it's literally she knocks on a door, a woman opens it, and she goes, hello? And then her girlfriend walks up, they turn, make out, turn around and go, ha ha ha, comedy, ha ha We don't ha, ha, want ha. anything, and slam the door. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, that's I, I, super normal I, I, thing. I, I, I think the joke might be, they already got a carpet cleaner. Oh! Don't need none. Boom. Bow. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> but yeah, I was just like, oh, what the fuck are we doing, movie? Uh, and then we get the redneck. The creepy, <laughs> yes. creepy redneck. Yes. Who has, I'm not fucking kidding, a Kalishnikov laying against his coffee table. <laughs> She goes in this door and goes inside because she's offering free carpet cleanings as like a, a to show off the vacuum or whatever. And he goes, "You can clean my carpet, lady." God, yeah, she cleans the the room. She yeah. does the thing. There's a point where he gets up and he's like, <laughs> "Hey, what's up?" He, he's just like uh, <laughs> he's like Lagatha's mom, like Lagatha's mom behind him, just like yeah. Your boyfriend's really cute, just rubbing behind. And she's like, he's like, why don't you clean my bed with that? Get it? Sex. And there was a point where he's like, you know what you're doing, uh, don't you? Coming in here with those tight pants on, bending over vacuum in my house. Hang on, she is, she is the most dressed down woman yeah. possible. She's wearing a this. polo and slacks. But uh, yeah, I, I get And anyways, my favorite thing, though, about the whole thing, because they're going, again, it's like, this, again, they're do like, it's it's stereotype 101. It's like mm. the lesbians, two chicks walk up, they just make out in your face and slam the door because they're lesbians. And then this guy, redneck, he's got a fucking, uh, whatchamacallit on the wall, the, the flag, the fucking southern flag on the wall. And then, and he's got a fucking gun sitting on his coffee table. But the gun he has is an AK-47. <laughs> like, it's so fucking weird. It's so weird. I guess uh, the, the comments already. That's actually... <laughs> yeah, I don't fucking care. <laughs> the Union Jack, maybe. I don't know. I'm not gonna know. I don't care. Um, but th there's... He... You know, he's oh, a sexual the gun, yeah. predator. It's an AK-47. <laughs> no, he's absolutely a sexual predator. Uh, and, he, and he tries to, yeah, he's like all over it. And she's like, ah, runs away. And now she's traumatized by this experience, as you and would be. The only thing to better the situation, what's the best thing that could happen right now? You get fucking mugged. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she's in her 
car recovering from this traumatic experience, and somebody's coming up to me like, hey, you got some loose change? You got yeah. some change? Yeah, a guy Just, comes and knocks on the window. Can you give me some change? And she goes, oh, okay, and rolls down the window. <laughs> guy grabs her and steals her purse and punches yes. her in the face. But, but luckily, doesn't take her flask. No, no, doesn't take the flask because uh, she's got that tucked in between the seats, and it's been a rough day, Kyle, so it's time to get lit. Yay! <laughs> um, so she's going back on the booze. She's been sober for a year, but it's been the worst day ever. Uh, so she's getting drunk again. And I love she drinks on that flask. I'm not kidding. Like she's suckling a sweet, sweet booby. She is like, she is, she's just straight like. <clears throat> I'm like, that's not how you drink. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> I guess you could drink that way if you're weird. You can drink if the thing's empty because it obviously is. <laughs> Uh, and then when she goes back home, uh, she's drunk and miserable, and she's looking at a picture of her ex-husband. And the picture of her ex-husband, again, I think they're going for like a sweet, candid camera moment of him. But it's the goofiest looking picture of this dude when you see it. He like He's like... <laughs> it's like it's this like serious moment she literally is about to can potentially kill herself and the picture of her boyfriend her ex-husband is like huh? and I'm like, what are we doing movie what are, okay um so she rips up the picture thinks about slitting her wrists but does not with with like a kitchen steak knife or something like that yeah it's like come on get, get like uh, a but razor if you're gonna do it do it right don't do it right don't do it at all that's the good bad or bad bad message <laughs> put a bunch of synths over this <laughs> Again, and then we cut back to the business guy. He's talking about uh, the cops that are reading the blog. And I don't understand why this guy knows that the cops are reading the blog or how he's able to tell that story. It doesn't really matter. Um, but this one lady has become obsessed. Well, he, he has played detectives on multiple occasions. That's true. Uh, we're introduced to Teresa, who's Kelly's older sister. We talked about her earlier. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we get the stuttery still frame. What do I got? I was going to stick on my tongue. Oh, fucking... <laughs> Um, uh, and I love, so she's talking, Teresa's talking about, this is a little moment that's really funny to me, uh, kind of representing the, how terrible the dialogue is. She, Teresa's on the phone with Kelly and she's like, hey, are you coming to my baby shower? What? <laughs> yeah. And Kelly's like, oh. Are you coming to the baby shower? Don't tell me you're not coming. Well, uh. And then her, uh, Teresa's husband walks in and goes, It's amazing. Goes, it's amazing. I need you to show me where you want me to place these decorations. You know your baby shower's coming up. You know your baby shower's coming up? Yes. Yeah, man. It's my baby shower. And I love, so the moment, the reason that line exists, right, Kyle? The reason that line exists of him saying that is to, 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 to key in the audience that she has a baby shower coming What? But what you literally just did that four seconds ago when she was like, hey, are you coming to my baby shower? So you don't need the second one where the guy's like, hey, you know, you have a baby shower, right? Oh, the writing in this movie is just a plus stuff. Just a plus stuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> you people make me so sick. Oh, please. We've all spent time out in the field, Tracy. It is no big deal. Oh, and this this is another little thing in this exact scene. She's on the phone. Teresa's on the phone. Has a whole conver whole ass conversation on the phone. And then at the last moment, it cuts back to her. And as she's saying goodbye, she's chewing food. Did you notice this? No. She's literally, it's like a whole conversation, talking, 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 talking. And then it gets back to her and she goes, okay, bye. And I'm like, what? What? what just happened? She's eating for two, Brian. <laughs> well, but when? Where? She's in the closet. <laughs> she's in the, she's you never, in you've never had a ham closet? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a fucking ham closet, Kyle. Holy shit. Oh, but it's so great. I was like, why is she eating? I want to know what was happening on set that this, this actress was like, fuck you, I'm eating. <laughs> like, I don't care that I wasn't eating five seconds ago in this scene. I'm eating now. Fuck you. And then... Kelly shows up at a house to sell a vacuum cleaner and she sees her boyfriend's car there, her fiance's car there. Yes. Which is called, his license plate is like Mo Jazzy or something, which is weird, but whatever. Um, so he walks in and he's like, or she walks up and she rings the doorbell and uh, this beautiful woman answers it and it's, her name's Nadia. And she's like, da -da -da -da. And, then, and then her fiance walks out and he's like, hey. Cheating on me? Yeah. With this How dare you? time and ho? Yeah. But wait. There's, There's more. more. <laughs> <laughs> then a man opens the door and goes, hey, honey, come back inside. 
to her fiance. Meanwhile, the extra woman who was there was like, okay, this is feeling really weird right now. She's a maid. She's the maid. She's maid. Yes, she's the maid. Because right. the, the guy who walks out and goes, Nadia, did you get that thing? Or I don't know. He says something. So she's the maid. I'm just a maid. That's all. Uh, I don't have time for this drama. But yes, we find out that her fiance is in fact gay or in a relationship with this other man and uh, was been cheating on her with him for a long time. And my favorite moment about this is the end of this scene. So it's a great reveal, like out of nowhere. But the yes. end of this scene, he they're standing there talking. And then the, her fiance's new boyfriend will, opens the door and goes, John, we have dinner. We have dinner. Honey, dinner's ready come inside and he goes okay and just goes back in to eat he like interrupts this like serious conversation he's having with his fiance who has just found out that she is being cheated on he's like i'm kind of hung i'm kind of hungry so i'm gonna go eat look, look, look i know i've ruined your life <laughs> yeah but uh dinner's warm and i don't want it to get cold no. i don't want to get cold and then he opens the door she's leaving and throws the ring at her here, sell this for something. For a gun. He goes, you might need this, and throws the ring out the door. What the fuck is happening? Okay. Then she's sitting in her car talking to her ex-husband, and she and this whole time she's talking, we see these like billboards behind her, and mm. one of them is a Captain D's billboard. <laughs> and then at the end of this phone call, she hangs it up, and she looks up and gets this look on her face like, and it looks like she's looking at the Captain D's sign, and I was like, she just got a severe hankering for some deep fried fish, baby. <laughs> Fish lovers, mm, if you've got fish on your mind, Captain D's presents fish any way you wish. Is she just staring at that Captain D's billboard? But no, we find out she's looking at a billboard for a pawn and gun shop. Yeah. Golden pawn or golden gun or something. And she goes in to pawn a ring and buy a gun. And this scene is legitimately, and I'm not kidding about this, the best scene in the movie. And she doesn't have ID. No, That's important. she doesn't have ID. I think this is the best acted and like best at can it's it's not it's wild and nutty this pawn shop owner is a little crazy he's and that's what i mean and that's what makes it good because this dude is literally filleting a slim jim with the grossest teeth i've ever seen for this entire fucking Ugh. scene there's, it, there's a point where she's selling it and she didn't like what 300 or something for yeah this ring? She, he's gonna give her 400 but then uh she doesn't have like the deed for it or like the she is or i no idea this could be hot I'll give you 300. Deal. And he's, it's amazing. Amazing line to all the orders. Like, See these cameras? See all these cameras here? I don't do nothing in front of those cameras. Now you come back. Especially brush my teeth. Yes, I definitely exactly. don't brush my teeth. <laughs> now you come back with me and we'll get you settled. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh God, she got to suck Yeah, his I know, off. right? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, especially because the way he's fucking sucking that Slim Jim. Like, he is straight up blowing that Slim Jim in this scene. Um, and he also has, like, intensely disturbing fingernails in this scene. <laughs> it's, it's all really bad. Oh. Um, and then, so he goes, he go, but the whole time, I thought the scene was actually effective because he's gross and awful and like uh, and and her overacting in this scene kind of works it's like one of the only scenes well in the very end of the movie where her like over the top like jim carrey levels of like rubber facing and like nonsense kind of works for what's going on um the rest of the time it's nonsense so uh she goes in back to buy this gun because he wants to sell her a hot gun you know off camera that sort of thing so he goes in back and she's standing back by this desk and he shows her the gun she's like cool he's like it's beautiful great and he goes i'm gonna go get oh i'm out of bullets i'm gonna go get some bullets for it to, to, to give you bullets for it and he leaves and while he's gone she has a, a straight vision. up hallucination it's amazing she opens there's this door right next to her yes that she thinks she hears something behind and she opens it and it's a woman it's a woman who shoots herself in the fucking mouth kills herself and it's pretty good like rel like the, the the effect of like the the whatever you know makeup effect they did on the head looks relatively convincing there's not nearly enough blood and shit i don't think on the wall but whatever <laughs> um i don't know for sure See, fbi <laughs> <laughs> brian's an expert on brain matter no nope. <laughs> mm -mm. um but uh so she like hallucinates this woman killing herself 
And I was like, what the fuck? That was weird. But this this is where it gets so strange, Kyle. Yes. She's standing in the... And then she goes back and realizes it, it. she saw... This was like a vision or hallucination. She's not covered... Because she thought she was covered in blood. She's not covered in blood. The door shut. None of this happened. She just like had a vision or whatever. And then the, the pawn shop guy returns and goes... What are you doing over here? She just can't... I think you better go. Now. Hey, what are you doing? Get out of here. And I'm like, she's literally stand. Sorry. <laughs> it was so much moisture. I could put out a fire with that. Um, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Kyle contracts hepatitis C. <laughs> I definitely do not have hepatitis C, Kyle. Um, but, uh. He comes and he yells at her. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, she's standing in exactly where you left her doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Why are you yelling at her? And he goes, get the fuck out of here. And then he's like, and she's like, oh, okay. And runs out. And then he runs out after him. He's like, don't you ever come back. You're here. She was standing where you left her when yeah. you went to get bull What is happening? Yeah. Not, what? Okay. But the flashback is that was her mom. Well, we find that out later. Yeah. Later. That it was and her mom. That the pan, that pawn shop guy is the same pawn shop yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, Just like twenty years right earlier. Yeah, and what I'm guessing is he had like he had a PTSD. Oh, mental. and he was like, oh, don't go in there. Yeah, he's like, oh, uh, but she's standing. He literally walks her to that door, yes. and then is like, he's, why are you by this door? And I'm like, what? crazy old man. Fair enough. It was just so strange to me because you don't know at that moment like that the whole mother thing. Like, so I was like, what the fuck is he? Okay, sure. But yeah, I even still it, it, uh, so dumb. Uh, then we have an AA meeting uh, where a bunch of people are talking. So the cop, one of the detectives, the male detective goes to a counselor to talk about his female detective who's become obsessed with this suicide. Which, yeah. And by the way, if your partner is like seriously researching some like suicide shit. Yeah. Talk to somebody yeah, about which that. he does. He does. To be fair, he does. He goes to this thing. And this is where we get kind of one of the messages of the movie delivered to us about. I mean, as blunt force, like this is the message of the movie. I mean, every message in this movie, they literally say this is the message of this movie. Yes. Like every time they do it. But uh, this is one where he's like, uh, I have this. She's obsessed with suicide. Uh, what's uh, what should I look out for? And she's like, here are the warning signs of suicide. The suicide affects everybody. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your shape, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, black, white, old or young. It affects everybody. Oh, Sorry. it's amazing. Yes, this is such a PSA. It's such a PSA. They, they list it off literally like you're reading it from yeah. a script or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you are reading well, it. Well, she is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you're reading from a, a fucking booklet about like the yes, warning signs. It's yeah. amazing. And, and, and what the, a <laughs> the end of it, the, the, as they're reading it, we're looking at the faces of these people in this meeting. And it's like the most pain, anguish faces yeah. the whole well, time. And my favorite thing. So it's people in a counselor, like a group counseling thing. And when you, I went, because I was, I, I happened to be scrolling through the credits and i saw one of the women who was one of the women in that scene mm -hmm. uh who's like looking at the camera like i guess it's one of the suicidal people she is credited on imdb the one woman in that scene it's like a, an older dude a younger guy and i don't know and then there's like one brunette girl and that girl is credited on imdb as suicidal lesbian <laughs> <laughs> that is we know nothing about her we never hear any backstory it's just a woman in a counseling and they're like she's a suicidal lesbian that's important for her character for you to know <laughs> okay well and then the guy one of the guys is suicidal veteran so like they just like well that makes more sense well but, but i mean yeah it, but like i just i thought i thought it was really interesting just, that they here's added character tags yeah that have no relevance. Have no relevance because we don't know anything about these people. It's like, why are you giving? Okay, sure, fine, all right, cool. Um, I'm not saying that lesbians can't be suicidal. Right, just... <laughs> right, but like, it was just so weird. Of like, why are you adding character? Like, it's like this weird thing of like, I, I almost feel like they had that moment of like, um, it's like an actor thing of like. You know, even if you have a small part, create a backstory for your character. You know, like, even if you're just, like, an extra, what's your extra's backstory? And it's, like, these people who are in three seconds of the movie were like, I'm a suicidal lesbian. That's my motivation. 
<laughs> it's like, that'd be amazing if they gave her like that character card. She gets like a character card. Here's your character. Here's what she is. Here's what her her motivation is. Everything about her. It just it goes background. Suicidal lesbian. <laughs> She's like, okay, <laughs> yes, I got. It. So I'll just look sad, and they're like, yep, nailed it. Exactly. <laughs> it's so amazing. Um, uh. Uh, so anyways, he, basically the, um, the cop is like, Hey, we just want to get the, uh, or not the cop, the counselor lady's like, we just want to get the word out there. Don't commit suicide. And the cop's like, okay, the end of scene. <laughs> and it's like, great. All right, cool. Awesome. Um, this is where things go off the rails. Ooh, her car breaks down. She goes to see her sister for the baby shower. She's all fucked up and gross because she gets hit by mud water. And her sister's like, you suck and I hate you. You dirty gets fucker. Gets hit by mud water. They take a freaking cooler yeah, and yeah. dump it over her. Yeah. Um, and I thought she walked up to the house that Neil Breen blew up and passed her. <laughs> like, it kind of looks a little bit like that house. Yeah. Uh, and there's, like, fancy music playing and whatnot. <laughs> The number one thing you need to do when you are visiting your sister for a baby shower, your possibly estranged sister at this point, uh, is ask for her car. Can I borrow your car? You want to borrow my car? Yeah. Yeah. She shows up. She's like, can I get your car? My car ran out of gas. And then that storyline's never resolved. Or I thought that was going to like be a thing. Yeah. It's not a thing. No. She's back in her own car the next scene. She's literally back in her own car. She goes, can I borrow your car for two hours? She goes, yeah, have it back in two hours. And then it cuts, and then she's in her car. Like, her, I was like, what was, the, okay, cool. All right. Great. Um, this bar seems pretty great. She goes to the bar, and she says, I'm going to go uh, talk to the one thing that never let me down. Booze. <laughs> you know, you never lie to me. You make me feel better about myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then... Uh, so much face acting. I mean, every scene, all she does is face act. She just <laughs> like the whole time. It's it, it 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 reminds me of like um, it's like it's like somebody playing. Uh, remember that game on Mario Party where you used to like stretch Mario's face into whatever to match. Did you ever play Mario Party? No. Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, uh, there's I, one yeah, game. Also, the beginning of Mario 64, you can do that. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah, well, the, but there. I think that's what the game in Mario Party is probably based on. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. But there's a Mario Party game where you like stretch the face to match like a face they show you, mm -hmm. and it's like if you took a clip of that and sped it up a thousand times, like a thousand percent. That's what her face is doing in every scene. She's like, and I'm like, what's going on with your fucking face? Um, oh my God, what's wrong with your face? And so, but the bartender shows up and gives her a drink. He's very friendly. He like yes. starts holding her hand. And then uh, as she's coming to a confession of sorts. Yeah. And then there's a point where she's like, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic. And he's like, Fuck! God, <laughs> My favorite thing in that moment, she says, "I'm a recovering alcoholic," and he's like, "What the fuck did I get into here?" <laughs> he's like, he comes over to talk to her and, and he, give her a he's drink. He's actually caring, gives great he's advice. He's great. I need you to think of your daughter. Think of all the people that love you. And if that don't work, here's the number to a suicide hotline. He's it's, great. He's even a fantastic. He's, he's going way above and beyond for a bartender. So he does all that. And, and he gives her a suicide hotline number. Yes. He's like, hey, if you're ever feeling bad, call this number. And, and then like, she ends it trying to kiss him. <laughs> she tries to kiss him and he's like, oh, honey, no. <laughs> I'm married. <clears throat> um, Kelly? I hate to ruin this romantic little thing we got going on right now, but, uh,. I'm going to marry me. Oh, my God. But he turns down her kiss because he's married. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love my favorite thing in this moment. Uh, <laughs> he goes, she goes, how much do I owe you for the drink? And this guy who's been so caring and so, like, saying the right things relatively throughout this whole scene, he goes, you look so pitiful right now, baby. I, I, I'm not charging you anything. Oh! And I'm like, bro! Don't say that! Savage! <laughs> Just be like, hey, you know what? You don't owe me anything. It's on me, kid. Like, just say something nice. You look so pitiful right now. What are you doing? Okay, great. Uh, and then uh, we cut back to the office, and Tracy gets threatened with door-to-door -door sales. Uh, uh, this is where she gets threatened with door-to-door -door sales. And my favorite thing is after she gets, Mitch is like, I'll put you on door-to-door -door sales, Tracy. Oh, Tracy. Yeah? 
I'm thinking about putting you out in the field. Better keep an eye on your numbers. Is she does an angry face that is literally the epitome of like a toddler pretending Howdy. to be angry, <laughs> like, <laughs> like man. But she comes to the greatest epiphany of all, which is quit. Yeah, and she's like, "You're not dumb. You certainly can find something else. Probably paying more than this job." I'm not dumb. I'm gonna quit. It's literally like what she tells her. Do you mind if I listen to my daily affirmations? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then uh, I love too. So Kelly's back in the office for some reason. Oh, she shows back up at work and she's drunk or whatever. And I love that the, the Amanda or whatever comes in and just starts roasting her for no reason. And I'm like, People like, do people like this exist? I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. But she's just some random coworker who comes in and is just like, hey. You know, Kelly, you're not gonna win over very many customers looking the way you look. You might wanna try cleaning it up a little bit. Hey, hey, shouldn't you be visiting your kid? <laughs> I forgot you have a kid to take care of, right? <laughs> Wait a minute, she lives with her dad. Oh, that's right. You don't have one anymore because I got taken away from you. I'm like, what, what are you doing? The hell? That is so, so mean. It's like above and beyond. It's so fucking weird. Uh, it's fucking nuts. And then um, uh, Tracy's in the car also threatens to murder everybody. She I swear I'm going to hurt those people one of these days. And uh, Kelly goes in to Mitch's office and he fires her. Yes. And this is when it goes down. This is when it goes down, yes. Kyle. He threat he fires her and she goes, you know what? No. You can't fire me. Cause I quit. <laughs> Kelly, you actually think <laughs> And it feels almost like a conga line. She starts she pulls out the gun and starts holding people captive in Mitch's office one at a time. One at a time. She holds Mitch captive with the gun. Amanda walks in. Boom. Now she's a hostage. Steve walks in. Boom. Now Just he's don't a go to Mitch's office. Don't <laughs> yeah. do it. Yeah, it's a bad, it's a bad thing. Um, and there's so many times in this movie where people talk to themselves. Like Steve is in the bathroom just talking to himself like a fucking <laughs> Well, a handsome fellow, aren't you? I mean, you're not a bad catch. Got good job, good pay, no kids, health insurance. I was like, why? People don't talk to themselves, but you know who does talk to themselves? People in bad movies who don't know how to write. Because because that's how you explain character motivations, is you have a character go, I don't feel, I don't like this, I'm gonna go talk to this person about this thing. You can't just have your characters announce how they feel. That makes me feel angry. Uh, also, the, the fucking thief from earlier shows back up in this yeah, moment. Yeah, he's trying to rob. He's like a faking he, as a as UPS a, yeah, guy. What the hell is this about? And he robs Tracy with a stapler? He tries to. With a stapler? He tries to, and then apparently he has the weakest chin on the planet. Oh, she... Or Tracy fucking trains. You know, she might know fucking Gracie or something. She fucking knocks his ass out. Who knows? Um, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> what hold did she have on him? Uh, oh, well, yeah, okay. maybe the wrong thing. I don't fucking know. I don't. Okay. I am not a fighter, Kyle. I'm a lover. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but she, um, she knocks. She lays him the fuck out. Oh, and then we randomly cut back, and I was like, I forgot about this frame story because we randomly cut back in the middle of this to the two coworkers talking, and we get a close-up <laughs> shot of a plate of half-eaten powdered yes, sugar donuts. Yes, and, and, the, and the guy's like, "Oh, we're gonna need something more for this." For this part, I think you'll need some of this. Yeah, pulls out a bottle of alcohol I that he's gin, hiding yeah. at work. It's like Jaeger or gin or something. Yeah, and he's like behind the coffee machine. He's like, and I love earlier. He's like. <laughs> Coffee had a hold on me. This yeah. doesn't. I don't know about that, man, but I'm pretty sure the booze has a hold on you. Like, I know what kind of coffee probably did. Irish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because holy shit, he pulls out a bottle of booze and she's like, "Can't? aren't we not supposed to drink at work? He's like, shut the fuck up. And he's like pouring booze in their fucking cups. Oh, it's so great. And then this is where we find out that the mom killed herself at the pawn shop. That doesn't really matter, but th that's where we find this out, that her mom killed herself at the pawn shop. Um... And we get a big, long mo inner monologue about how Kelly feels and how she's super upset. Um, it, it's, it's so stupid. Until this moment, I had been feeling weak. 
now I felt strong. I felt less than until this moment. But I did ask in this moment, I'm like, how do we hear, how are we hearing her monologue if she kills herself? Because all of her monologue has come from the diary so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the movie got me in this regard because before she kills herself, she sits down at the computer and writes her last diary entry. I was like, oh, you got me there. Because I was like, all right, fair enough, movie, fair enough. She starts shooting people in the office She shoots Mitch right in the fucking chest after she strips their pants off for no reason (laughs) whatsoever. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but and this is the other scene that works with her. Oh, Tracy's held captive now too. Yeah, Tracy shows up at one point because she's there to like quit, and she shows up and then ends up getting held ca- uh, held captive. Boy, did you choose a wrong yeah. time for this? Yeah, um, and, because they've always kind of been friends. Her and or, or Tracy and Kelly, like Tracy wasn't didn't participate in bullying <laughs> Kelly, so they've kind of been friends throughout this whole thing. But I also love in this moment um, that <laughs> the uh, I will say that in this scene. That this lady, the crazy faced, just off the walls, bonkers actress works in this moment yes. where you are unhinged and have snapped and are like killing but coworkers. The problem is you need to escalate yeah. to that. But she's that you the don't, whole you don't, movie. You don't start at 11 <laughs> and then end at 11. Yeah, no, she does in this movie. Yeah, that, and that's the thing is that that the level of unhinged crazy that she is when she's literally murdering coworkers is the same she acts every scene. In this entire which, film. Which, at which point, of course she would do <laughs> this then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she recounts every bad thing that happened to her this week. And I was like, oh, this is a Kelly in the no good, very bad week. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then the, the co-worker's response is great. It's like, it sounds like you've had a really bad week. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you had a bad week. Maybe you should have called in sick. <laughs> sounds like you had a no good, very bad week. <laughs> I fucking did. Somebody should write a book about that. <laughs> um... Uh, and then this is a great moment. The uh, Steve is sitting there and he's trying to get loose because like she's talking to uh, Tracy or something and he's trying to get loose and he's talking to Amanda who's tied next to him and he goes, You know in the movies, a black man's always the first to die. Are you making jokes in this moment where you're being held at gunpoint by an unhinged coworker? Okay. Um, great, great, great. Uh, She calls and talks to her daughter on the phone and has a great unhinged mother dialogue or monologue about, we're going to go to the beach and let the sun tan us and run through the sand and it's going to be great. And I'm like, this is fucking nuts. We are going to do everything like we planned. We're going to pack our stuff and head down to the beach. And we're going to let the sun raise tan us and run through the ocean waves. Uh, and then uh, her phone goes dead, but she she thankfully she informs us the audience. She's like, the phone is beeping, battery's going dead. Yay! Early right. two thousand cell phones. Yeah, I'm uh, glad you told said, said that out loud for us. Also, when the when Steve gets his hand free, he pulls his hand out and does a little cheeky like, I'm free. Oh. Ooh, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? But instead of him immediately being like i'm like twice her size i can overpower her yeah he makes a run for it and gets shot yeah yeah no he tries to run out the door and gets shot in the fucking chest and dies i also love at one point uh (laughs) uh tracy who's there who was there to quit she's like still mad at mitch And she turns to Mitch, who has been shot in the chest and bleeding Bleeding. for, like, minutes and minutes at this point. And I say shot in the chest, like, in a very vital part. Oh, yeah. No, he has a collapsed lung, without question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she turns to Tracy. And I I remind you that Tracy is the the one who there to quit, not the one who's holding everybody at gunpoint. Turns to Mitch and goes, I came in here to tell that asshole that I quit. You hear that, Mitch? I quit. I need a doctor. You hear that, Mitch? I quit. Fuck you. And he's like, yeah. I'm dying. Yeah, not really top concern right now. <laughs> he's like, I need a doctor. <laughs> it's like, okay, great. Um, also, the guy, the UPS guy. He comes back in. Why? It's so weird. He comes inside and he he's he's comes in, I guess, to like rot, steal something. I don't even know. But he hears all this going on, and he looks. And I love his little peep around the corner. He's like, what? but then he his big old thick booty knocks a, a pencil cup off. The, he's backing up, and he and knocks his, a pencil. He cup. hides under his desk. <laughs> he hides under his desk and pulls the little rolly chair in to be like, oh no. And she walks out, and she's like, 
right in front of him, and like six inches from him. He and sees he's, her and he knows who it is now because it's the same woman he and robbed. And he's, he's breathing so loudly. He's like, <sighs> and you can't hear him. <laughs> and then we have a moment of comedy. Classic comedy in this office murder spree. Of him just urinating all over himself. Pees himself. And again, she hears none of this. She hears none of this. Uh, but yeah, it pisses his fucking pants. Uh, and then we get the rope. Call back to the rope. Tracy is like, look, here's here's the rope. You could just kill yourself, bitch. <laughs> like, I was like, ah! We're going back to that again? All right. Uh, but you know, she goes, Do you remember when we talked about the rope? Here it is. Here's the rope. I'll take the reins. And I'm like, Oh God. Okay. Um, uh, uh, so then she kills everybody. You need to go! Yeah. Everybody. Including the UPS guy? I don't, I think he runs away. He gets away. He runs away. But he, she kills, Tra we assume she kills Tracy and Amanda because Mitch and Steve are basically dead at this point. Yeah. And Amanda goes for the gun while Tracy's talking to her and we hear like four gunshots and Ooh. we assume that Tracy and Amanda But we, we see her covered in blood now. Typing her. <laughs> typing her last entry. Yeah. As uh, this film pretty much comes to an end. Yeah. And, and she, uh, she's oh, typing. She, I love she, but I love during her, 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 her last blog entry. She goes, I'd like to thank TSB for this great opportunity. <laughs> thank you TSB.com for this opportunity. Oh, yeah. I'd like to thank That's this awesome. website for letting me write my murder suicide blog. Big ups to you. <laughs> like and subscribe. Uh, and then she calls the suicide hotline and kills herself. The end. Well, not the end, because then we cut back to the frame story. The two mm -hmm. uh, employees talking to each other. And this ending is my favorite part of mm, I don't know, it's not my favorite part of this whole movie, but it's one of my favorite parts of this whole movie. We cut back to the two co-workers and literally the guy goes, what's the moral of the story? Every single person you see is going through something. So it's hard to tell from the outside what storms are raging beneath that placid exterior. <laughs> and I was like, thanks movie. Thanks. Thanks for like, let's state your thesis statement by going, so what's my thesis statement? This is my thesis statement. And it also ends in the credits. Uh, if you know somebody who is having troubles, have yeah. them call the suicide hotline. Yeah. So what's the moral of the story? Every single person is going through something. And the woman, I imagine the woman in the scene is like, you just told me a story what? about a, somebody you used to work with who killed a bunch of people in this office. Yeah. And then my favorite oh, moment, the big like, the horror movie twist ending. She didn't work on this floor, did she? She sure did. In the same cubicle you're in now. Yeah! I was like, what? <laughs> he goes, she goes, did she work on this floor? And he goes, yeah, in your cubicle. Oh no! Ah! Credits. <laughs> what the fuck is going God. on? What the fuck is holy so this shit? This movie can be long and drawn out at times, but it is oh, a it's, good bad. Oh, it's so good bad. This movie is bonkers. I love it so much. the The main actress's performance is so oh, like I cannot express enough how just I I don't know what she was doing most of the film. Like you said, her her. Uh, her her acting in the final scene when she has lost it and is like holding everybody at gunpoint is good because it makes sense in that mm -hmm. moment. But she is that same person throughout the every film. everything that happens. She's like at that same level, and it's it's wild. I I love this movie. It it's 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 got a good message, but it delivers it like. A, 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 I don't even know, man. It 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 it. it, it, it it's the weirdest. It's one of the weirder movies. Ah, eh, that's not true. We've seen a lot of fucking weird movies, but it's kind of similar. It reminds me a bit of like 365 days or yes. something. Yeah, it's a good of one. Just like that kind of thing of just like, what is even going on here? This is unhinged. Um, 
And it's got all the great there, there production. Wasn't, there, and unlike 365 Days, though, there wasn't like a flip the switch moment where it's like, oh, everything's better. Yeah, now. everything's no, better. It, I will give this movie credit for that. Is that it's like it ends on bleakness. It, yeah, it, it ends on a on a note of like a cautionary tale or kind of thing of like, and it has a good message. Like I said. It's like, hey, you don't know what people are going through. Be nice. Like, cool. Also, whoever Great. the general manager is for Dust Genie, that must have been a hell of a turnaround to try and get those <laughs> spots rehired. Yeah, right. Uh, well, so uh, four people got murdered here. <laughs> so, slash suicided five, here. right? Uh, well, Steve, uh, Yeah, four Mitch, murdered and one suicide. Tracy. Steve, Mitch, Tracy. Amanda. Amanda. So four murdered, Amanda. one suicide. Yeah, five know. people all dead in the span of a day. Uh, and that smell under your desk is piss. We don't know where it came from. <laughs> Just hit it with some Febreze. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah it'll be all good. Uh, we gotta move these. We gotta move these vacuums, ladies. We gotta move these vacuums, ladies and gents. Um, I mean, fortunately, we work at a vacuum cleaner selling place. <laughs> so, God, they get. They, they, <laughs> it's man, you realize how much money they're gonna save in yeah, fixing this they, place? Yeah, clean it up. They got it all made in Quite shade. literally, like it never even happened. Yeah. Holy shit. Maybe that's, maybe it's like they're going to use it as an advertising thing where like, they're like, they bring people into the office where she murdered four people. And she's like, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> they're like, they're like, would you believe me if I told you four people were brutally murdered in this room? No. You know how you don't know that? Vacuum genie. <laughs> It's the best. It's like that Febreze commercial where they like blindfold people and put them in like the world's smelliest room or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's that, but it's like we murdered four people in this room and cleaned it up. All right. Uh, that's so anyways, good, bad. I'm glad we're back on track with a really, truly good, bad mm-hmm. movie. As always, you can support us on Patreon and get our podcast and everything. Uh, you can send us mail at our uh, P.O. box. Uh, good, bad, bad. It's on the screen right now. <laughs> I have a podcast called This Film is Lit where we talk about movies that are based on books when this is out the movie, I don't remember what we'll have talked about but we just did Lord of the Rings and we're in the middle of our Lord of the Rings series so go check that out me and uh, Katie talk about Lord of the Rings for a long time uh, and uh, that's it uh, so until next time keep watching movies especially especially Angry Kelly it's, and it's on YouTube Angry Kelly go check it out uh, it's fantastic later